be that policies and procedures is not the first video that you turn to in this series of understanding the digital and social media, but it is an important one, not least because we might touch on some legal matters that it might be helpful for you to know about, but more importantly, because we want our digital space to be a safe place for all. So in this video, we will be looking at good principles for online communication, GDPR and data issues, looking at some basic copyright rules, and good practice for social media accounts. So Methodist churches, circuits, districts and individuals are encouraged to adopt our social media principles to encourage us to think about how we conduct ourselves online and to be aware of potential pitfalls. We want our social media to be a means of extending our engagement with people, both inside and outside the church. Digital works really well when people are authentic in their storytelling, the highs and the lows of faith and life. But the downside to this is personal vulnerability, and it's important that we consider the safety not only of yourself, but also of others. It's important that the safety of children, young people and vulnerable adults especially be maintained. And we'd like to encourage you to read the Children, Youth and Social Media and Communications Guidance for churches on our website. If you have a safeguarding concern at all, please inform your district safeguarding officer. And we know that conversations on social media can sometimes develop into heated and pointless arguments. Be aware of the effect on yourself and don't feel you always need to engage. You can always sign off from a heated conversation calmly with something like, I think we just have to agree to disagree. Peace. So thinking about some areas we want you to look at. First of all, respect. Do not post or share content that is sexually explicit, inflammatory, hateful, abusive, threatening or otherwise disrespectful. Be transparent. Don't mislead people about who you are or use pseudonyms. And as we have just said, disagree with love. If you have a criticism you need to make, consider carefully the tone of what you write. If you are personally attacked, do not respond in kind. Being a Christian means that sometimes we must speak out and challenge injustice. But remember when you need to point out something you think is wrong, that there is a real and possible vulnerable person at the reviewing end of what you have to say. Be careful when sharing content. Don't share in haste. Read linked accounts thoroughly or watch a video to the end so you know exactly what it is that you are sharing before you judge whether it's suitable to share. And maintain confidentiality. If telling a story about someone else, ask yourself first, is this my story to tell? Don't reveal personal details about others without their explicit permission. And your responsibilities. If you, as a moderator of a social media channel, think comments or other content is unsuitable for the context they are in, or they are offensive, you should take action that may include hiding, deleting or reporting comments, or blocking the users. So now let's look at some GDPR and data issues. The GDPR law that came in a few years ago covered three main areas. First of all, new rights for people to access information organisations hold about them. Secondly, obligations for better data management. And thirdly, a new regime of fines. 
You can find out more about all of these here at TMCP. But for us in the church, there is a standard privacy notice for churches, circuits and districts to use. One relevant element of data protection for us is email newsletters. Basically, the law says that you can't send people email newsletters unless you can show that they have asked to receive them. This is automated when you use something like MailChimp to send out newsletters, and it's called the double opt-in. So when you enter your email address on a church website, for example, to sign up to their newsletter, you will then get a verification email, which you need to click to verify it's you. Now, there are exceptions to this rule. You are allowed to send people emails if there is a legitimate interest. And of course, you need to have a clear unsubscribe link on every email newsletter you send out. So now let's have a look at just some copyright basics. You may need to pay attention to these copyright issues. First of all, photos. Always source stock images from safe websites Pexels, etc., and not from a Google search. Take a look at our video on photography and the video about Canva for some ideas here. Be careful about written content, especially things like poems. Always get permission from the author and keep a record of that permission. Many of you will be looking at legally live streaming your worship the Church Copyright Licensing International, has just launched the Church Streaming Licence for the UK and Ireland, which is available to purchase via their online store or over the phone. If you are live streaming using YouTube or Facebook, the CCLI Church Streaming Licence is all that you need, and you do not need to purchase another licence from PRS for Music. So online worship really took off in 2020 and there is comprehensive guidance on potential pitfalls of streaming videos, audio and more at the Methodist Church website under Copyright, Roles and Responsibilities. And lastly, we want to suggest some good practice about your roles and responsibilities on social media. As general best practice, don't post photos or images of adults, or especially children online, without explicit written consent from the individual or parent. You can obtain forms for people to sign from the Methodist Church website. We strongly recommend that you have two to three administrators for all your social media accounts, as this will help avoid the sites becoming inaccessible to the church. Have a look at our video on roles and responsibilities for more about this. Make sure you change your passwords regularly and keep a record of who holds the passwords in the same way that you might keep a record of key holders for your on-site church. And so remember, a healthy Christian community is a safe place of mutual care where all people are valued, loved and respected, both on-site and online. <laughs>